So even your business choices, because you know, I saw the two of you at a Delhi Capitals match, if you recall a few months ago, and you all were getting very excited. The match was close, lots of father-son bonding, but you sort of venturing into other areas, particularly sport, football, Bengaluru FC, Delhi Capitals. Was that again your decision or do you go and consult dad and say, look, should I get into uh, franchise cricket? No, I think both mom and dad have been extremely supportive to all of us. So, whenever we go with a new idea, uh, there's been a lot of encouragement. So, sports, I think from childhood, the entire family, whether it was my mom's side or dad's side, were very passionate about sport. I remember every Olympic game since 1996 is Leander Pace's first medal. I remember every hockey game that we watched together. And it was always ingrained that we need to do something for sport. And obviously my chacha, when he fought for the flag and you know the whole passion for India was there from my Babaji and then my chacha and then everyone at home. So when the idea came that we should get into sport, they were extremely encouraging. Both mom and dad said that go for it. Uh, it's a great, you know, great way to give back to India. And it's a great way for the country to, you know, progress. You know, when, when uh, Neeraj Chopra finally got that Olympic gold, I said, you know, Parth has to get a slice of it. Ek chota sa to Parth, you must, go, you must keep with you, right? No, no, I think all credit to him. But so, we, we were all sitting and watching Neeraj Chopra's final throw and we were, I remember… In front exact, of the TV? Or in front yeah, of the TV. Yeah. And, and uh, you know, it was… Because it was in Japan, we couldn't go there, right, right. for this Olympics because of COVID. So, we were all there and we were all very nervous. And suddenly he threw this and he won the goal. This fellow started crying. You know, he was jumping and crying and we, jumping. We, we, crying. we were all crying. Yeah, so this fellow was really, he was hysterical. We couldn't control him. So, so then I told him that, okay, now it's, he's done, he's done, it's okay. And that's fantastic because all of you, you're incredibly, you worked with Teach for India. Uh, which is a great NGO which works among underprivileged and you worked in Mankur in Mumbai as a teacher for a couple of years. I did. I think the one thing that I have to give credit to both my mom and dad is that they never say no to us. If we can prove ourselves and if we can have the right reasoning, they might not agree with us 100% but they won't say no to us. So when I was actually placed in the school in Mankur, my mom was very upset. She was like, how can you go there every day? I was like, mom, I'm going to go and I'm going to go by train. And she was like, there's no way you're going to travel by train. So what I used to do is to go by car to the train station, tell my driver you stay here and then take a rickshaw and go to school because I didn't want the community to know that I'm coming in a private you car. Know, to all our viewers, Mankur is very far away yeah. from <laughs> South Mumbai where we are at, a, at the moment. Yeah. And you then moved into holistic education and yeah. that's and where you're... A, one, one of the biggest slums. It's the like it's, Ravi, it's, Ravi. A re, it's where everyone from the from Pedemelo Road and Churchgate area has been rehabilitated in these Mada right. housing. So you work in a slum area yeah. for a couple of yes. years amongst kids. Incredible. And you've also discovered yourself in the world of design and architecture, which is again very different from the world of steel. <laughs> yes. You know, all of this is very far away from what the original family business was. Is that again? Uh, your personal interest and choice? Yes, absolutely. But I think the one uh, thread amongst all of us which my parents instilled was, my dad always said to us, with privilege comes responsibility. And, um, you know, whether it's sports, whether it's education, whether it's architecture, craftsmanship, it all comes with that sense of deep responsibility towards our country and how to make it better. You know, corporate social responsibility, which is what JSW Foundation also sort of represents in arts, culture, education. Is this something that you thought is your way of taking forward the family brand in a way? Because in, let's say, 30 years ago, very few people did real philanthropy. There were the Tatas and a few other groups. Now more and more corporates are getting into uh, uh, doing sort of genuine CSR work? I think uh, in all business families that corporate social responsibility is ingrained in all of us. I somehow when I shifted to Mumbai, I wanted to do something different because I was not allowed in the family business. So I always used to tell my girls, of course, part I knew will join the business. I used to ingrain him also in his when he's five years old, that you have to come and you have to join the business. He knew it. Are you saying women can't join the family business? No, no. When I was, in my uh, in, generation, in your, you know, women were could. not uh, allowed in the family business. 